A few years ago, KLH made headlines with the relaunch of their iconic Model 5, a speaker that you know we loved. With the hype surrounding the 5 behind us, today we're looking at one of their more budget-friendly traditional speakers, the newly updated Kendall 2F. The 2F is a three-way tower speaker handcrafted in Canada that serves as an update to the original Kendall, which was launched way back in 2018. The Mark II features a 1-inch titanium dome tweeter, a 5 and a quarter inch aluminum mid-range driver, as well as two 6 and a half inch aluminum woofers, and it comes in an English walnut or black oak wood veneer. Now, the 2F produces a reported frequency response of 36 hertz to 20 kilohertz that, when combined with its in-room sensitivity of 91 dB and an impedance of 8 ohms, make it a very amplifier-friendly tower that hopes to steal market share away from hi-fi and home theater favorites like the Polk R700 and Klipsch RP8000F Mark II. One of the first things to impress me was the almost Klipsch heritage-like good looks. The real wood walnut veneer used here is a thing of absolute beauty and very uncommon for a speaker at this price point. Now, knocking around the cabinet reveals some resonance here and there, but overall, this is a very well-built speaker that should work in medium to large rooms without being overwhelming. One thing to note, the speaker has three ports, one on the front and two on the back. The rear ports help the speaker achieve its 36 hertz its response, but they also make the speaker just a little bit more sensitive to placement. Speaking of placement, when taking measurements, I noted a rise in base energy between 100 and 200 hertz. This bump was present regardless of the measurement method I used and does appear to be inherent to the speaker's design. You can mitigate this through placement or by plugging the ports, though the latter does cut the speaker's base a bit. Pulling the speaker out from our front wall about two and a half feet resulted in the most even response in our room, though the hump was still present and with certain music could, emphasis on could, result in some bass notes sounding a little bit overpronounced. And this is something that I noted when listening to Moby's Ever Loving, when driven by both the Class AB Rotel 5000 and the Class D Wemamp. Not a deal breaker, but if you get these speakers for yourself and feel that they sound a little too well full in the bass, do yourself a favor and experiment with placement before deciding if they're the right or wrong speaker for you. Now, I don't consider the mild rise in the bass an issue. For me, it's better to have bass and then find ways to tame it than not have any in a tower sounding anemic. The Kendall's bass hump is very easy to deal with using manual EQ adjustments or automatically with room correction solutions such as Dirac or Odyssey, which are very common in AV receivers or amps like the Weem amp. Using the Weem's graphical EQ, I was able to bring the bass into near perfect alignment with the rest of its response, resulting in an overall sound that I can only describe as pleasantly neutral. Pleasantly neutral is just my way of saying the 2F, once properly set up, it has a sound, but it isn't one that is immediately apparent due to obvious, say, excessive bass or treble. This is not a thumpy party speaker, nor is it going to wow you with an overly bright tweeter. Much like the Polk R700, the Kendall is incredibly easy to listen to at all volumes and with a wide variety of music. The 2F is much easier to drive compared to the Polk's, too. This means that you can use less expensive electronics with the Kendall and still enjoy all of its texture in detail from the base on up to its mid-range, which is evident in my heavy usage of the Wii Amp during our evaluation. A quick note though on that Wii Amp, while it is technically capable of driving the Kendalls, if you have a large space like ours or you like to listen loud, I'm talking levels higher than 80 dB from a distance of 10 or more feet, I would not pair these two together. You will be better served by something like the Yamaha 1000A in these situations. The Weem simply lacks the headroom to safely drive the Kendalls to loud volumes, especially in larger spaces like ours. Now, despite having a titanium dome tweeter, the 2F is not a bright or metallic sounding speaker up top. Sure, cymbal hits and car crashes have that sheen, that metallic crunch, but they are completely void of an aggressive edge. It's a bit more extended up top compared to the Polk, though like our Polk, the KLH tweeter will not cause fatigue. As for soundstage and dynamics, here's where the Kendall's character is likely most notable. For starters, its soundstage is strongest between the speakers and sits a step or two back of the front baffles. This means everything, including lyricists and actors, will sound like they're seated back of the speaker or closer to your screen. Now, because a lot of speakers are going to sound more forward by comparison, some of you may think the Kendalls are less intelligible. They're not, but we'll see what Christy thinks in just a moment. Spatial cues outside of the Kendalls boundaries are good, just not as focused as what you're going to get between the speakers themselves, and this is something very easy to discern when comparing them against speakers like, say, Sonus Fabra 
Farmer's Luminous Series or the Q Acoustic Concept 50. Dynamically, the KLHs build rather than shout. They can play quite loud and do so with little strain, but due to their composure up top, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that some of you may consider them to be a little bit polite compared to other speakers in their class. I find them to be a little bit more exciting than the R700s, but they are nowhere near as immediately arresting as the Klipsch 8000F Mark II, which for some of you could be a really good thing. Now, home theater fans, you can pair the new Kendalls with its matching center, the C2. Unlike the one you may be using with the Mark I towers, the C2 was specifically designed to go with this new 2F. The 2C, it's a three-way center channel speaker, and its mid-range and tweeter are aligned vertically to match the 2F's dispersion pattern off-axis. We used the Emotiva MR1L to test the Kendalls and found the pairing to be a great match. Now, the C2, it is a little bit taller, but that's by design, and it also lacks ports, so you may find find it easier in terms of placement. However, that taller stature may make it a little bit more difficult to put right below your TV. Now you can rewind this review for the numerous Polk R700 comparisons, so I'm gonna keep this head-to-head -head short. For nearly two years, the R700 have had few rivals, so long as you were okay with their rolled off treble. The KLH is a speaker you should check out if you're eyeing the R700, but want a speaker that is less weighty, more space and amplifier friendly, and a touch less subdued in the treble. I prefer the look of the Kendalls all day, even if the Polk may be the better constructed of the two, all things considered. The KLH isn't necessarily gonna save you money in your speaker purchase, but I would not be surprised if it proved to be a better fit physically and sonically for more listeners. As for the Klipsch 8000F Mark II, I, I still love the Klipsch, and I consider them an absolute steal, especially when they're on sale. But let's not mince words. The Kendall is the better, more refined speaker, and the one in this head-to-head -head that I would choose. If anything, I hope Klipsch sees the Kendall as an example of what could have been or could be when it comes time for them to design a Mark III. As for our mid-fi speaker of the year, the Q Acoustics 5040, it is an equally great speaker, though a little less adept in the bass department. The 5040 has a superior soundstage and a greater sensation of clarity and intelligibility without seeming forward or bright. The Q Acoustic is also smaller and may be easier to integrate into difficult spaces due to its size and greater placement flexibility. This one is more of a toss-up for me, though admittedly you will save by going with the Q Acoustics, though if you want more bass, a sub will be required with the 5040 whereas with the Kendalls, it could, could be an optional extra for some listeners. And for you keen-eyed observers, if you thought you were seeing a Bryston speaker, the Kendalls more than passing resemblance to the middle T is no coincidence, seeing as how KLH has partnered with Bryston in the making and manufacturing of the Kendall 2F. While the resemblance is obvious, a quick peek at each speaker's spec sheet reveals some differences, differences that may justify the Bryston's higher price tag. I have not personally heard the middle T, so I don't know if it's better or worse. I really enjoyed my time with the new Kendalls. I'm a big fan of their room-friendly size and furniture-grade finish, and while I understand they may not play as low as the R700 from Polk, it is a compromise I'm willing to accept because the Kendall is a better all-around fit for our particular needs. I didn't plan to kick off 2024 with a best of nominee, but I have a feeling we're gonna see the 2F come December because this is a great speaker. Quick break to thank today's sponsor, Keeps. Like a lot of men, my hair began to thin a lot earlier in life than I expected. I didn't realize just how much I needed help until I started this channel. Viewers will definitely let you know if anything is off, but thanks to Keeps, sitting in front of the camera is not as daunting as it once was. I've, I've been able to treat my thinning hair and stimulate new hair growth without ever having to leave my home. With Keeps subscription-based service, I get my FDA-approved treatment products along with shampoos and conditioners that keep my hair looking thicker and healthier, all for a price I can afford. Plus, there are no time-consuming doctor or pharmacy visits. Keeps makes it easy to speak with a professional online, and then your order is shipped discreetly right to your door. To date, Keeps has helped nearly one million men keep their hair, myself included. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get your special offer, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson or click the link in the description and try it for yourself. That's keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson. Now, back to the video. So that's what I think of KLH's fabulous new Kendall 2F loudspeaker. But before we get out of here, you gotta, we got to hear from the boss. So what did you think? <laughs> well, before we get into what I think, it may be a new year, but the audience here is still the same. And I know there will be at least six comments asking, well, what about the Mark 1s? Oh, the original Before they've Kendall's? even hit play on the video. Yeah. 
you know, and so that's why okay. I got your back. Uh, I reached out to KLH to learn more about the original Kindles because, okay. again, we have I not, haven't heard them. We haven't heard them. They came out yeah. in 2018. Yeah, even before fault. the channel. Yeah, before the channel. <laughs> so to those of you kind souls who have made it this far, first of all, I want to say thank you. Yes. Thank and second, please timestamp this section <laughs> to our less patient viewers. <laughs> You'll you'll have my love forever. Yeah. What's new? Kindle Mark One versus the new Mark Two Two F. Um, this is per KLH. Okay. okay. All right. The new Kindle Mark Two has the has basically the same loudspeaker configuration, and the same wood veneer as the original. Okay. Um, now KLH moved to aluminum cones and a titanium dome tweeter okay. for the this new version. Yes. The big design difference. Mm -hmm. According to KLH, mm -hmm. is the addition of the heavy-duty outrigger spike feet, which, mm -hmm. according to them, improves something called room decoupling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds yeah. made up. And gives the speaker <laughs> a more quality feel. Okay. Um, you know, it's also now made in Canada, if that yes. matters to you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What, what, do you, what is this decoupling stuff? I mean... It really depends who you talk to. I mean, some people will say that, you know, you do couple, you tighten the base, you do all of this, you do all that. When in my experience, like, eh, that's a little bit harder to kind of discern or measure 100% of the time. Um, decoupling it from, say, your, your floor or surface is a great way to tamp down on vibrations and other things, you know, nearby furniture or loose objects that may be sitting atop furniture. Uh, decoupling can definitely help uh, with that. But you need to know, like, out of the box, uh, the two Fs are shipped with rather large hard floor rubber feet. And they do just as good a job, in my humble opinion, at decoupling. And honestly, I saw the outrigger feet as being more of a stabilization thing. For those of you maybe with larger pets or kiddos who have a tendency to knock into things, I would definitely put those outrigger feet on because it does make the speaker a lot more uh, stable. However, I applaud KLH actually for giving you the option it's not like the Polk uh, R line or reserve series where those quote outrigger feet are integral to the design and they're kind of ugly. And it's one of the things that always bugs, bugs me about seeing the R700s is I really don't like the feet design. Um, and so I like having the option. Awesome. So the performance differences, again, mm -hmm. First first version versus this new version. Okay. Again, according to KLH, according to KLH. the 2F has a larger enclosure yes. than the original mm -hmm. Kindle, um, which, again, according to KLH, contributes to its better bass authority. Additionally, the treble isn't voiced quite as forward mm -hmm. as the original, okay. and which should result in a more balanced sound. Go ahead and chime in about the, what you think about that. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I didn't bother to look at measurements uh, that other third parties maybe have made of the Mark I, so I'm not going to go out on a limb and say, I have compared the two, and this is all true. I will say, uh, if KLH is claiming a, a far more linear response, this speaker delivers, at least in our experience. I measured them near field, I measured them, you know, from our listening position, I measured them while taking multiple measurements from around the room, and not only are not only do they track very well um, across an entire three four seater sofa, but they are remarkably consistent, especially from like 200 hertz on up to say two kilohertz that treble region. This thing is ruler flat. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about my what I what I actually think. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've <laughs> we've gotten there. All right. Look, in my opinion, KLH. They just, they know how to design a, a good speaker. Yeah. The finish, I mean, maybe it's because we've been looking at so many veneers lately, wood veneers, mm -hmm. for other reasons, not mm -hmm. related to speakers, <laughs> that I am more uh, aware of how good this particular veneer uh, on the Kindle looks. Mm -hmm. But it's gorgeous. I'm literally sitting right next to it as we speak. I find the most comparable with the Q Acoustic 5040s. Mm -hmm. I personally feel the Qs 
are a little better when it comes to intelligibility. Mm-hmm. You kind of uh, you know brought that up, like how what am I going to think? Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, that's really important. Yeah, I'm I'm not saying that the the KLH are unintelligible. Okay. Now I don't really recall the measurements of the 5040s, mm-hmm. but I have to imagine that they have a little bit more a top end, which could be why I find them a little bit more intelligible, or maybe it's the mid range. I think where the Q acoustic benefits in the intelligibility department is the fact that it doesn't have as much bass bass presence. I knew you were going to say that. Because as soon as I EQ'd some of that bass uh, down to be kind of more in line, um, you had an easier time understanding dialogue in stereo. I, I would, I would suggest, I would bet and also suggest that anyone that would be considering the two Fs, um, if your stereo product or your receiver has Odyssey or Dirac, go ahead and run it because it's not going to take all of the bass away and make this an anemic speaker. It's just gonna kind of firm it up a little bit. And I also have to imagine that that might be the difference maker in why the Bryston is more expensive, is maybe a little bit more bracing, a little bit more thicker wood and stuff like that which would pay dividends in that control department uh, down low. Um, but for what it is at this price point, I mean, the 2F is phenomenal. But I think, I think uh, the intelligibility is spoiled just a little bit for you because of that base rise between 100 and 200 hertz. Well, do you think if somebody has the Mark 1s okay. and they have maybe a little bit of hearing deficiency somewhere, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you think the fact that at least according to KLH, mm-hmm. the uh, more pronounced treble in that speaker could help them? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you still own the Mark 1s and they're working for you, it does appear as if the 2F is a little bit of the same, but also a bit of a new direction. And so if you're expecting, uh, again, going off what KLH says, if you're expecting kind of a more gussied up Mark 1, this may not be the move you need to make uh, in terms of upgrades if, if you're on the market for an upgrade. Um, based on what they have said, and now based on my experience with the 2F, I'm disregarding the Mark I. It sounds like the Mark I really was a different beast, and I am focusing my attention on trying to suss out is the 2F a R700 alternative or you know alternative to the 5040 blah 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 and i and i think that it is so if if some of these loudspeakers Q acoustics polk um Clips really isn't comparable in my humble opinion, other than in price and just they're going to be cross shop because you can buy these pretty much at the same place as you can get clips um but if tonally you're looking for uh, a more room friendly, uh, amplifier friendly, maybe just all around more friendly R700. This is the closest I've seen. I feel like some people might find the the these speakers, mm-hmm. and I would apply the same to the the R700s. Like if you heard the R700s and you felt like there was not a lot of anything special about them, mm. um, I think you might feel the same way about these speakers. But I think it's because you're probably expecting to be wowed somewhere. Yeah, you're you're wanting this. Yeah, and it's it's not this that not the speaker that. is is bad. You gotta you just you gotta know what kind of sound you gravitate towards. Oh, absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with gravitating towards a bass heavy sound or a brighter sound or a neutral sound. It's just there are speakers that fit into certain categories, and I would put this in the category of, if you've ever listened to the new Polks, the, the Q Acoustic type products, Kef's Q line, stuff that tends to historically strive for uh, a, a little just more linearity, this is in that camp. But if you're like, I'm looking to upgrade from my really, really bright bookshelves, is this the thing to go to? Probably not. You might find this speaker incredibly dull. And that's not a commentary on you, but that's also not a commentary on the Kendall. Yeah, I 100% agree. Yeah. Um, I say all the time, you really have to know what kind of listener you are. Absolutely. Well, you know what that means. That means we're done. We are done. That is our review of the first brand. First review. First review of 2024. KLH, Kendall, 
2F. Who had that on their bingo card? I'm willing to bet no one. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you've used any of the links that Christie's left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you have continued to show your support for the work that we do here. And both of us thank you very much for doing that. Uh, speaking of thanks, I want to thank the video sponsor Keeps one more time. Again, to get your special offer, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson. Uh, thanks to Keeps. Um, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video.